the relationship between religion and science has not always been a smooth one. That said, there are times when it all seems to come together perfectly, especially in the field of quantum mechanics, which attempts to describe nature at the smallest atomic and even subatomic scales. The current working model of physics states that there are four fundamental forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, and the weak and strong forces between atoms. Now, scientists claim they have observed a fifth force of nature that could transform our understanding of how the universe works. Researchers at the Hungarian Academy of Sciences have revealed results that could show it in action. They saw an excited, decaying helium atom emit light when the particles split in a strange way that could not be explained by the current understanding of physics. The new particle they called X17, which scientists claim could connect our visible world with dark matter, an invisible substance thought to make up more than 80% of the universe's mass. If their tests prove accurate, the discovery could completely upend our understanding of how the universe works. In other words, we would have to reconsider how everything is related to each other, connected together, and in communication with itself in a way that seems to resemble the old occult alchemical concept of ether. To gain a better understanding of this new mysterious fifth force, let's watch this brief presentation regarding the recent claims made by scientists in Hungary. Maybe there is another force. Maybe that force is actually responsible for dark matter and dark energy. Maybe there is something else going on that we can't really explain otherwise. And so the scientists from uh, Hungary back in 2015 decided to actually try to discover something known as dark photons that they believed were responsible for dark matter. And to try to discover this, they were basically bombarding various types of molecules with very energetic light to try to see how those molecules and atoms would react and maybe discover some kind of a secret in the process. For the experiment in 2015, they were essentially using the atoms of helium-4 and turning them into beryllium-8. But while doing so, they discovered something unusual. As they gave those atoms more and more energy, instead of essentially dispersing this energy in a regular way, some of the dispersion was very unusual, as if another particle or another unusual source of energy was actually changing things a little bit. More specifically, the angle that was formed right here was actually not meeting the expectations and the patterns that they were expecting to observe. It looked as if there was another particle that was being extracted from here, a particle whose mass was about 30 times heavier than the electron. And roughly around a year later, another paper came out sort of suggesting that it was actually not a particle at all, that this would be more easily explained if this was a completely new force, the so-called fifth force. And because this article was published in the Nature magazine with its prestige and its reputation to uphold, this was a very big deal. Many scientists tried to actually jump onto this discovery and see if this was correct. And now, only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video, a new paper from the same team came out with more proof that this so-called X17 particle might be a real thing. They're naming it X17 because of the amount of energy that it has, which is roughly around 17 mega electron volts, which is, as I mentioned before, about 30 times more energy or more mass, the so-called rest mass, than a typical electron. Now, if you're not really familiar with what I'm talking about here, this is the idea that Einstein proposed about 100 years ago, that today we refer to as energy mass equivalence. In other words, mass is energy, energy is mass. That's kind of how the nuclear reactors work. So this E equals mc square applies to electrons and their mass can be defined in terms of the actual electron volts. And if you multiply this by around 30, you'll get the mass of the so-called X17 particle. And this time, instead of using beryllium, they just used helium. And just like before, they once again discovered a similar anomaly, suggesting something was coming out of atoms, something resembling a force, or maybe a new particle, but probably a force. But before anyone jumps into any conclusions here, 
this is all we know about it. We basically just kind of roughly know the mass of this unusual particle, possibly what's known as a boson, which would be responsible for creating this force. But at the same time, there is absolutely no practical explanation to any of this yet. As a matter of fact, the scientists who studied this in a lot of detail realized that there is currently no physical theory that can explain what's happening. And at the same time, while the scientists behind this paper were actually trying to explain the mysterious dark matter, the signs of which are all over the universe, unfortunately, instead of finding this dark photon, they stumbled upon something completely new and mysterious. And as of today, this discovery has no unexplained physics or any kind of phenomenon that we can actually attribute to it. And it's very likely not an explanation for the mysterious dark matter. As a matter of fact, to try to explain what we're seeing, it's going to take an Einstein-like ability to connect the dots from various studies and various fields to try to understand what's happening, why it's happening, and how this might actually improve our lives later on. However, if this is a discovery of a new fifth force, it's definitely going to redefine our understanding of the world, while at the same time possibly rewriting the physics textbooks if all of this is correct. Now, it will probably take a lot more research and a lot more scientists participating in this to try to either explain this in some other ways or to try to understand what's really happening there and if we've discovered something that's fundamentally different. If this really is the so-called fifth force, we don't really know what it does, why it does it and how it affects the universe. But this is where things get really interesting because in the next few years, I'm sure someone will actually be able to explain it. Some of who we today call pagans believe God to be diffused throughout all things. The Zohar explains the term Ein Sof as follows. And I quote, Before he gave any shape to the world, before he produced any form, he was alone, without form, and without resemblance to anything else. Who then can comprehend how he was before the creation? Hence, it is forbidden to lend him any form or similitude, or even to call him by a sacred name, or to indicate him by a single letter or a single point. Honorary 33rd degree Freemason Manly P. Hall said, and I quote, The Kabbalists conceive of the Supreme Deity as an incomprehensible principle to be discovered only through the process of eliminating, in order, all of its cognizable attributes. That which remains when every knowable thing has been removed is Ein Sof, the eternal state of being. Although indefinable, the absolute permeates all space. Abstract to the degree of inconceivability, Ein Sof is an unconditioned state of all things. Substances, essences, and intelligences are manifested out of the inscrutability of Ein Sof, but the Absolute itself is without substance, essence, or intelligence. Ein Sof was referred to by Kabbalists as the most ancient of all the ancients. It was always considered as sexless. Its symbol was a closed eye. According to the Kabbalah, Ein Sof Or is the limitless light, an empty, black, silent void that expands itself into boundless proportions, filling itself with metaphysical substance various philosophers have named luminiferous ether, or an electromagnetic azoth. This liquid light substance is an invisible, electromagnetic, radiant energy. Its vibratory emanations are far too subtle to be perceived by or through any of our dense senses. Being an invisible black light, 6,000 years ago the high priests of ancient Egypt declared, Behold, our God is a black God, too brilliant for mortal eyes. Of course, this was not meant in the context of skin color, 
but referencing what in alchemy is known as the prima materia, or materia prima, the first matter, the omnipresent starting material required for the creation of the philosopher's stone, or, in a biblical perspective, the darkness that existed before God said, let there be light, the blackness from which light itself is born from, the great mother. This might help to explain not only the black Osiris, but also the black Madonna, the black Kali, and other deities associated with darkness. That said, the white Osiris is the manifest physical universe we perceive and which the Bible calls day. Modern physicists now declare physical substance fundamentally to be comprised of a light substance in vibration. They have yet to declare just what this light vibration might be, however. The smallest physical particle for years has been known as the quark. More recently, an even smaller particle has been revealed, and this science is labeled dark matter. Ein Sof Ur is that dark matter. The night or dark matter, is the ocean of black liquid light, a living, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent substance permeating every aspect of all manifest and unmanifest levels of experience. It is absent nowhere, filling all space, filling mineral, vegetable, animal, human kingdoms, and kingdoms beyond. A continuing emanation. Every point exudes its own light and life. Alchemists call this their universal first matter, universal mercury. This is the substance of creation from no thing. The Hindu equivalent to Ein Sof Ur is Mula Prakriti, the root matter. Alchemists from all periods have given it any number of different names, but the principle, one designation, has always been simply water, but a permanent water. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an independent anthropologist and author. My books are published on Amazon.com. Please consider making a donation to Atlantean Gardens if you'd like to support my work. Thank you for sharing this video and subscribing if you haven't already. Please leave a comment and I will see you next time.